We just picked up a half of a beef from our local processor and I was thinking about it and I feel like getting a half or a quarter of a beef is kind of an uh, intimidating thing sometimes for people. And so I thought I would take you through the whole process of how you can find a farmer, cover sort of the terminology and just walk you through how you can also get your own grass-fed local beef. I'm Kelsey from RefandTumbleFarmhouse.com where every single week I share stories about farming, family food, and fortitude here on our five-acre homestead in northern Minnesota. So we have definitely processed our own beef before. We've raised and processed our own chickens, hogs, and beef. And the beef, it kind of varies. It depends on if we have any steers to butcher. We primarily raise dairy animals and so we may not always actually have beef to process. So uh, our freezer is looking pretty low. <laughs> and so there's a local farmer that I've known for a lot of years and we just reached out to order some beef. But if you don't know someone who raises beef already, you might be wondering how do I even get started with finding beef? So it, it's probably a little less complicated than you think. I'd recommend checking your local farmer's market. There may already be someone there selling cuts of beef that also sells by the half or the whole or the quarter. You can check with your local co-op. They might know somebody local who does it. Just ask around to friends and family. I think you'd be kind of surprised to find out. They might, oh yeah, my friend orders beef. I can ask them where to, where to look. Facebook is another good resource to check out. There's a lot of, at least in our area, there's homesteading groups, small farm groups, that sort of a thing. People are often advertising on there that they have beef or pork or chickens available. And last case, worst scenario, you can just Google it and you might come up with some results. One of the biggest questions I think that people have about buying beef in this sort of way is, is it really worth it? Is it more cost effective? Yes, it absolutely is. I break it all down in the blog post that I will link below where I tell you absolutely all the cuts we got. I also talk about how much the price difference is. And just on, I think it was T-bone steaks alone, I looked at the cost of if we were just to go to a store or online and buy some grass-fed T-bone steaks. The cheapest I could find was $13 a pound, but on average it was closer to like $24 a pound. And Across the board, once you broke down how much you paid for our beef, it was like six seventy a pound, I think. So if we had bought T-bone steaks from the store, uh, the same sort of grass-fed or bought package from another farmer, it would have cost us a little over $300. And because we bought them along with a whole half of a cow, it only cost us 87 So it was saving well over $200 just on T-bone steaks alone. So let's say you found your farmer, you said, yes, I wanna do this. Let's talk through kind of some next steps. So first the farmer's gonna to wanna to know how much you wanna buy. A lot of farmers will sell by the quarter, the half, or the whole. Now, how much meat is that really? I'm gonna link below to the University of Minnesota. They have a really great webpage that's all about looking at cuts of meat if you're gonna order animals from a farmer and a processor. They break it down into how much meat you're gonna get, roughly what kind of cuts you're gonna get, and then they also tell you how much freezer space that you're gonna need for those sort of animals. So if you were to order a half of beef, it's around 286 pounds of meat. And for 286 pounds of meat, you need about 11 cubic feet of freezer space. So check out your freezer, how much space it is, and if you can fit that in there or not. Now, some things to keep in mind, if you're buying a quarter or a half, that means you are sharing that animal with other people. So if you're buying it by the quarter, it's not as if they just kind of like section the animal up into quarters and one person's just getting the back half, one person's getting the front half. They kind of mix all the cuts, so you'll get a little from different areas of the animal if you're buying a quarter. One of the downsides of a quarter or a half is if both you and other people want some of the stuff there's only one of, more, more so like organ meat. So if you're gonna want like heart, liver, tallow, oxtail, that sort of stuff, then uh, you're gonna have to figure out who's gonna get that. So once you have decided on how much meat you wanna get, the next thing is you wanna understand how much you're paying for it and kind of understand the different weight terminologies. So uh, on the hoof, you might hear, and that is how much the animal weighs when it is standing alive on its feet. You're really not gonna deal with that weight probably. Uh, the next one is hanging weight, and that is by far what I have seen the most common way that you pay for animals. So what hanging weight means is after the animal comes in, they butcher it, they take all the skin off. Sorry, but you are eating an animal, let's be real here. They take all the skin off and all the big bits, and they kind of get it into a few big like slab-like chunks. And they're going to take those and hang them on big hooks to let them age, and we'll talk more about that process in a little bit. But so once they get them in these big pieces, they hang them up on weight hooks, and that is the hanging weight. And so most of the time, 
you are gonna buy your animal by the hanging weight. Now the bummer is that hanging weight and the cut weight, which means the actual weight you are bringing home, there's gonna be a big difference. So the hanging weight is going to be about 25% more than the cut weight, if that makes sense. So let me look real quick at our numbers. So ours, the percentage is even a little less. It was, let me see here, 270, sorry, I gotta look at my numbers, 270 was the hanging weight of the animal, but when I totaled up the amount of weight of the actual meat that is in our freezer now, it's 187. So that's something to keep in mind if they say, oh, we charge you know, $6 per pound hanging weight, then the actual amount of, of food you're bringing in is a little bit different. And we'll talk numbers uh, in a little bit here. And I know, hopefully I'm not sounding too confusing, but again, you can check out the blog post where I have it all kind of written out step by step. So hanging weight is all that extra stuff. Once they cut it, they're trimming off fat, bones are going away. So then you have the cut weight, which is less. Now some farmers do sell by the cut weight. If you can find that, that's excellent. Cut weight is probably gonna be a little more expensive than a hanging weight. So if you have two different farmers you're trying to decide between one sells by cut weight, one sells by hanging weight, you're gonna have to do a little bit of math to figure out which one is more affordable or which one's a little bit cheaper. So the next thing that's important to talk about is you're gonna be writing a check to the farmer and then most likely, but not always, you are also gonna have to be paying the processor. So the farmer charges you X amount for your hanging weight. In our case, it was $3.65 a pound hanging weight. And then on top of that, we have to pay the processor. So we pay the farmer, he drops off the animal at the processor. And then when the time comes, we go to the processor to pick up the meat and pay them for their work of processing the animal. And again, some farmers will combine that all together. So that's something else to pay attention to. It may look like it's cheaper to go with one farmer, but you're still having to pay processing on top of that, whereas another farmer has figured all the costs in, and so you don't have to figure out the extra cost of processing. So once your animal has been taken to the processor by the farmer, you are going to have to figure out what you want your cuts to be. And this is gonna be referred to a cut sheet. And most of the time, in my experience, the processor calls you or you call the processor and they will just walk you through the cut sheet. If you've never ordered an animal before, do not be intimidated. The people on the other end of the phone have done this a hundred times. And so they'll just talk right through how many steaks do you want per package? How thick do you want your steaks? How much, uh, you know, ground beef do you want in a pack, one pound or two pounds? And as you go through, if you don't really know or don't really care, you can just say, well, what do most people get? Or you can say, well, what do you recommend? And go with that. So like I said, they will usually walk you through the process. And if they don't, in the rare occasion, I think it's a little more old school that people would just like get a cut sheet from the farmer and have to fill it out themselves. Just call the processor up and they'll be more than happy to talk you through the whole process. So do not be intimidated by cut sheets. Now I have been of course using the word processor and that is oftentimes the term you will find used for the facility that is taking the live animal and slaughtering it and turning it into meat cuts that are coming home to your freezer. Butcher tends to be a word that isn't used so much anymore. Uh, it's almost a little bit negative, you know, if kind of in common language, butcher would be like, oh man, that's a real butcher job on that, you know, as if like, oh, it was done messily or not with care and processors, at least the ones that I have worked with, take their jobs really seriously. They work hard to make sure they are quickly and as humanely as possible dispatching the animal and then creating really nice cuts of meat for you and your family. So to call them like a butcher sounds a little bit kind of crass and not respectful of the care they're putting into their work. Another term you might hear for it sometimes is a meat locker or just a locker. So how much is this gonna cost you? It is gonna vary completely on where you live, what kind of animal you're buying, how much of an animal you're buying, but I can talk you through um, our numbers just so you know. So again, I'm gonna have to look here because I'm terrible with remembering numbers. So uh, it was 365 per pound hanging weight. So again, those big pieces that are hung up before it's cut. So total, we paid the farmer $385.50. And then the processing costs us about $271. Another thing that's really important to note is processors a lot of times prefer cash. They may or may not accept checks and cards. There's usually a fee if they accept cards at all. Processors tend to be, how do I wanna say this? Not all the time, but they just tend to be kind of like lo-fi, <laughs> if that makes sense. So a lot of times I find checks are accepted Cards always have a fee if they are accepted at all. And when you're paying you know, a couple hundred bucks on something, a 3% fee is gonna be a little chunk of change. So our total expense for buying our beef was $1,256 for our half of beef. Now, how does that break down price-wise? 
that ends up costing us once I figured out the actual cut weight. So I divided the 1,256 by the cut weight, the actual meat in our freezer of 187 pounds. And that does not count any of the organ meat that we got, the oxtail, the lard, that sort of, the lard, the tallow, that is not included in that. So that's almost just like a bonus on top of this. So it costs us across the board for our meat, $6.71 a pound. Now, if I run to the grocery store and want to get a pack of grass-fed ground beef, it's $5, around $5 a pound. So that looks like it's more expensive on the ground beef end, but then that was, like I said, across the board. Your roast, your sirloin tips, your T-bone steaks, your all of it is that much. So really when you figure it out, which I'm not gonna sit and do the math and figure out the average cost of all these different cuts of meat and how much we paid for it, but it is absolutely a huge savings to buy your meat this way as opposed to buying it in individual packs from the store. So we did cover a little bit earlier about sort of the odd cuts of meat. So like I said, there are things like, I don't know if you would call them cuts of meat, but there's things like the heart, the liver, the tallow, the oxtail, and that sort of stuff they usually ask if you want it or not. If you don't want it, there may be other customers who want to buy it, or other times it just gets tossed with the awful, like the other stuff that's like kind of unusable. So I really recommend kind of stretching yourself and saying yes and trying those things. And if you don't want to use them, you may have a friend that is interested in having the organ meat. I know it's really healthy for like pregnant people and some people like to use it for feeding their kids and that sort of thing. So uh, if you can, I say take it. If you've got the space in your freezer and either get real creative in the kitchen or find someone who'd be really happy to get that super valuable meat. So the last thing I think we need to cover is how long does it take to get your beef? So when you coordinate with a farmer to buy beef from them, they'll usually say, well, I have a date at the processor on February 15th or whenever they're taking it in. So they will take the animal in on that date. Usually it's then that the processor will call you or you need to have called the processor. The farmer usually tells you, oh yeah, they'll give you a call or here's their number, please call them. And please do so they're not having to hunt you down. They're usually, especially these days, processors are very busy. So from the day that the animal's processed, it usually takes about uh, three weeks, maybe a little bit more, for the animal to be ready to be picked up or for your meat to be ready to be picked up. That is because after a beef is butchered, those big hanging slabs I was talking about, they have them hanging and they let them do that for about 21 days. And this allows the meat to dry out a little so that kind of concentrates the flavor. It also allows the muscles to kind of pull down and stretch so you're gonna get a more tender cut of meat. And after that point, then they cut it all up and package it. So eventually you'll get a call I said around three weeks after your processing date that your meat is ready to go. And then the processors really, really appreciate it if you get there and pick it up soon. Cause like I was saying, processors this day and age especially are very, very busy. They have limited freezer space. They have limited kind of racks they're gonna put the meat on. So it's a really good idea to get there ASAP. They called us, we got there the next day. Now you pick it up. Um, I recommend, depending on how much meat you're getting, uh, you can ask the processor if they provide boxes or you need to bring some. So when we went, I'll show you here, I had the back of our minivan with all sorts of coolers and all sorts of boxes because we haven't gotten a half a beef in a very long time. And so I really wasn't sure how much space I was going to need. I have a hard time kind of wrapping my head around that thing sometimes. And so we were able to easily fit all this in the back of our minivan. I was able to fit it in our freezer with a little room to spare, which is good. Though I do, uh, in this footage I have here of our freezer, I do have to go back because they did forget to give me the organ meat, which is kind of a bummer, but I got home like, where's my oxtail? I was excited to try, to try cooking with that. So show up promptly for your processor, have boxes if you need them. Usually you head on in, just say, my name is Kelsey and I have a half a beef I'm here to pick up. They'll pull out the information, you pay them for it, and then some guy or gal will go in the back, usually dressed in like a parka, and they will bring out the meat. Depending on how much you got, it's usually kind of like on a cart. They wheel it out to your car, you load it up, you haul it home. Uh, it can definitely stay nice and cold in your car because it is a lot of frozen meat altogether. So if you've got coolers, I mean, I'd be comfortable driving as far as probably like a couple hours away to pick up meat if need be. Thankfully, this is just at a processor that's like a half hour from our house, so you have plenty of time to get it home. All right, so I think that covers just about everything you should need to know to confidently go forth and get your bulk beef, either a quarter, a half, or a whole. And I will also say too, uh, word-wise, usually it's referred to as a beef for beef because cow technically refers to a female animal um, that has had at least one calf most of the time. So it's normally like at least a two-year-old 
dairy animal or something, or a beef mom um, is when they're called a cow. So beef is usually like a big steer that's been grown out intentionally for butchering. So that's why a lot of times it's not called a cow, it's called just a beef. So just so you're aware of why it's always beef and not a cow. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. If you live in kind of different parts of the state, again, we're in kind of like northwest central Minnesota. If you live in other parts of the country or you live in different countries, like you're up in Canada or something, please share your prices below. I think that's always so helpful to kind of know what are people paying on average. Let us know what your cost is per pound hanging weight or cut weight or any other tips you might have for people who are kind of new to this, this bulk meat buying process. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.